On this episode, Fast Five number six, we've got a lot of traveling witches, Steve Carell performing as a latte, and I forgot the other one. <laughs> Somehow we're going to work in video games and porn. Tune in. Let's check it out. Six of our no, let me try that again. <laughs> Welcome back to the sixth Fast Five, which is almost a tongue twister. Ooh. Thanks so much for following and listening along so far. This is going to be our sixth Fast Five through Untapped while we scroll through your check ins. And sometimes it looks like you're scrolling through our check ins. Uh, I checked into a yeah. beer called Paycheck Pilsner the other day. Harrison, did you see the comment on that? I did. People are already starting to comment on our check-ins and make up their own movies. <laughs> so make steal their jobs already, just like that. It was great. One sentence. It's just me crying on the 1st and 15th every month. Oh, that's right. Something, something to that effect. Perfect. <laughs> yes, that old paycheck. Where does it go so fast? It's already gone. That's if you're right. married, you're too that's behind. Right. <laughs> That's right. Just calling, apologizing to all the utility companies. <laughs> Need a little more time. Um, no, please don't turn off my water. But that's been great. Super cool to uh, to see that. Um, yeah, that was really cool. So please, if you're doing that, keep doing it. We'll try to find them. And yeah, tag us in those check-ins or comment on ours and uh, make us giggle. Um, but that's been, been amazing. Been super cool. <laughs> and of course... If you're listening and you haven't yet, now is a great time to remind you, go ahead and take a moment and hit that subscribe button on yeah. whatever you're listening with Spotify, YouTube, Apple Podcasts are the ones we see most of you guys listening on, and thank you for that. Uh, but hit the subscribe button so you know every Wednesday is going to be a good day. You get to listen to Harrison and I drink beer and be creative, I think That's is right. the way I explain it to people yep. I know. Me laugh and John be funny. It's, <laughs> it's great, very cathartic for me. Uh, every time we do this, it's uh, it's a blasty blast. So I hope you guys are having fun too. Seems like you are, but uh, yeah, this is super fun, John. I agree. If it's not fun, you're not doing it right. And speaking of not doing it right, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Last week we made a movie called Killer Bees <laughs> from a beer inspired by Melvin <laughs> Brewing, and oh. it, the I, I don't know what you th- <laughs> what do you think about that one, Harrison? I thought it was a blast, yeah. but. Um, you know, I went back and re-listened to it. I was trying to pick some things apart. You're usually very good at this. Uh, mm. w- was there anything maybe you feel like you would have changed or something that resonated with you? Yeah, I mean, the in the <laughs> the feedback circle that's just you and I, I think we're doing great. <laughs> and every episode keeps getting better. So <laughs> The best kind of feedback, self, self-important that's right, feedback. That's right. Yes, no rules, no metrics, um, just feeling better. But I do think I liked it. I have almost no notes. I mean, first of all, it was just fun to kind of do kind of a monster movie. Obviously, killer bees aren't monsters, but we've seen movies like this before with like Placid and Deep Blue Sea and Sharks on a Plane, as John kept ah, one of my reminding us last week, which that maybe we'll make that movie someday. If someone makes that beer, <laughs> let us know. That movie is half written. Um, but, uh, so it was fun kind of right. Letting nature remind us of its power last week. Um, and the, really the only note I had, I think we just kind of, it was a beat we missed that you don't need in every movie, but I do think it just raises the stakes and adds some more suspense. And that climax was, we mentioned early on with great focus and importance that Iris (laughs) was allergic to bees and that didn't really come back into play directly. I think, I hope everyone the whole time was kind of like we were just in suspense of like, Oh gosh, when is she going to get stung and everything goes South? And then that never happened. So I think an opportunity for something like that probably showed up when they had to emergency land the plane in Kansas. And, um, you know, the team came on to smoke the bees down and it didn't really work. Iris could have maybe like run through the, the bee swarm to shut the door to the main cabin so that no one else got stung. And in the process, I don't know if she gets stung or maybe she doesn't some magical, some something they, the bees, 
I don't know, recognize that she's also because her name's Iris. Maybe she doesn't get stung, and there's some unspoken. So Maybe that's what Stuff it is. Ooh, she kind of right covered in pollen, and they're just basically think she's a flower. That's fun. She didn't change her planes at all, or clothes at all from the plane trip to <laughs> Germany or wherever the hell, and then back. She's a good lesson. But only pack one outfit. She's rushing. That kind of makes sense. There might be something there. I like that, John. But anyway, I thought that was an opportunity we could have added there. But again, as as a reminder, these these episodes aren't even rough drafts. They're the goofy, you know, weird dream you have that you wake up and can't really remember, and we're just doing that yeah. while we're awake together. <laughs> Two guys that have that have watched a lot of beer and drank a lot of movies. That's it. Just making one up on the spot. And that's just for today. Everyone. Um, yeah, but it was it was fun. What about you, John? Anything you would add? Any thoughts? Anything else? I mean, from I'm, last I'm, week? I'm right on the same plane as you with making Iris face her fear a little bit more with the bee allergy. We, we probably could have, if you wanted a two hour episode, work that in. Um, yeah. But I did. So uh, the way my brain works is I felt bad about not knowing anything about bees. So ah, uh, some good. fun facts for you kids listening, Ooh. Uh, which you shouldn't be. This is a grown up podcast, yeah. but um, <laughs> the, the two things I remember are that the queen bee obviously controls pretty much everything, including right. the gender of all the bees born. Oh. She can lay 2,000 eggs a day oh, uh, in peak season. <laughs> maybe it's all, maybe it's 2,000 a month, but I think it's per day. Same but anyways, day. the important ones are that she can control the hive using pheromones, which we kind of yeah, touched on about that, when the like, killer bees yep. were making the other ones move up and down. Yes, And when the when two bees love each other, the male bee fertilizes the queen bee while they're flying, which is probably yes. something to see. That and the female, the queen, stores the the male, the sperm. Yep. She stores the sperm. So that could have been worked in there where this queen was like uh, pollinated while she <laughs> by by a killer bee, and that's how this that's whole swarm of killer bees was love getting it. born. So we get to see a love a bee love scene. With some sweet 80s saxophone music in the background, yeah. maybe in the bottom of that plane. I mean, that's never done before. That'd be kind of exciting, maybe? I, there's definitely room to work that into the movie that we made here. Killer, Taste, we'll do it tastefully. Killer B, science not always first. That's right. That's right. Golly. But then we kind of, right, then love is under the microscope. These two bees were just in love, and they ruined the world. What does that say about love? We probably would just ignore that and just treat them like bees, and yeah. they're not Tell in love. about the birds and the bees if the birds weren't there. <laughs> right, exactly, and humanity was all gone. It was just bees. What's that world look like? <laughs> we, we almost saw it last week. Oh, man, that'd be um, great. That would be something. A lot quieter. Less traffic. More honey. Um, yeah, but last week was lots of fun. Thanks for listening. Thanks for checking it out. Leaving comments, all that cool stuff. Um, we really appreciate it. And now we get to jump into the future again, John. We got to do that thing that we love doing. We get to head off to drunk people, Twitter and do this week's fast five. It's one of my favorite parts of this whole podcast. It's the fast five. I know. It kind of it's like a brain exercise, and one thing that helps my brain exercise is carbonated suds. Ooh! What did you bring to the party today, Harrison? That's this right. Delicious. We have some adult beverages, some road sodas. Nope, nobody calls them that. <laughs> well, <laughs> if you're getting construction right. done on your house, <laughs> right? Or you're an uncle. Um, but uh, so today we are enjoying from highland brewing out in Asheville, their daycation ipa yeah it's delicious it is delicious so this is a session ipa like 4.9% coming from highland brewing first brewery in legal brewery since prohibition in Asheville. they're celebrating or just celebrated 30 years of making beers um we got a chance to talk to their founder, Oscar Wong, doing a, a, a remote kind of virtual event with him a couple of years ago. Super cool guy. Amazing beer is kind of like a, a staple in North Carolina. Certainly in the craft beer scene paved the way for pretty much everybody else that came after them. So uh, wanted to enjoy some of the beers today. This just got a rebrand. It looks great. It tastes great. Um, yeah, and it's going to fuel us tonight through the fast five thank you highland yes. um and the legacy of oscar wong that's that's uh, who is, oscar wong highland brewing 
Uh, and there's a tie into Jamaica with that story too. There is. And I believe at some point before he was running the first brewery in Asheville, he was like a rocket scientist or something. Something like An that. An amazing man. I know. Super cool. Very nice and uh, a lot of fun to talk with. And yeah, loves beer. So, um, and they, all the beer they make is great. If you ever see a Highland anything, go grab it. Um, they're one of those breweries that has earned my trust. I won't even hesitate when I see new beer. I just grab it, bring it home, and it's always good. So we're enjoying one tonight. Are there any breweries that, you know, we don't have to don't have <laughs> just grab it. I'll it's find a, out a, later. A long or short list. Ugh, we'll see. All right. Let's get into Untapped here. Yeah. And I'm going to give it the old Wheel of Faith. Yes. The gambler. The gambler. The riverboat gambler. And we're the going run. to oh, boy. land on oh of course here we uh, go it was just about a month ago this, this beer is talking about uh, maybe it's talking about an eclipse oh. we have from austin beer works in the path of totality yes which i think this was i think these were i don't know if you could call this collabs i saw these all over the u.s from different breweries paul shim who we talked about a couple yeah. episodes ago he was checking a few in from the Buffalo area, obviously Austin Beer Works is down in Texas. So um, I missed this boat until I saw the uh, the pictures on um, on the old uh, internet. So all right, in the path of totality, Austin Beer Works IPA. I mean, gosh, sure it could be an Eclipse movie, but let's try what else. What else could be? What else is a totality? In the path, I, I love the idea that it's it's in a it's like a, a end of the world movie, yeah. But only for the people that were in the uh, path. Uh, uh, if you uh, oh. if you were around in the world a month ago when the eclipse happened, you were probably jealous that you were not in the path of totality, and for all sure. you got was a slightly less sunny couple of minutes. Right, right. So in this movie, in the path of totality, like the sun goes out and it never comes back. Oh. Uh, so, which was frightening at like three o'clock in Buffalo. It looked like midnight. Yeah. All right. The pictures, the video, I'm sure you guys all saw them, but it was, it was amazing. Pitch black stars came out for a couple minutes. Okay. I like that. So it's just dark in this kind of path forever. Maybe all the people disappear or gosh, yeah, I didn't have anything more than that. <laughs> it's just a very long, it's a very long eclipse. Right. Um. Maybe, maybe it could happen. Uh, what four or five hundred years ago? Okay. And, um, like in the path of t- there's like there's one like astronomer that's also kind of a bad dude, yep. and he wants to Always start taking are. over populations that have wealth. So he finds them, he tracks the moon and the sun, and he knows when these eclipses are going to happen. And he yep. shows up and he says, "Look, if Acts you don't like a wizard. give me all your gold and women, I'm going to take the sun away tomorrow." <laughs> And they're like, get out of here, you crazy bastard. And then the sun goes away, and all of a sudden, he's rich with golden women. Right. And he just keeps traveling from town to town doing this in the path of totality until someone, again, figures out his ploy and maybe is actually a wizard or magician and makes it not dark when it's supposed to. Or starts messing with him a bit. This could be like a, a dueling of a real wizard and a fake wizard, and maybe the fake one has to use his wits to beat this old world magic. I don't know. We could, there's maybe something there. I like that. That that was better than I, we had nothing until just then. So it's, that works. It's something. <laughs> um, are we going to, are we going to call that the feature? Probably not. We haven't no even way. gone through five yet. <laughs> <laughs> we, usually, we usually stop at like 20. If so. there are more of these, we could probably just skip them. We may see a That's lot of fair. in the path of totality. That's fair. It was a popular beer. Oh, no. Here we go. I see. <laughs> wow. Oh, great beer from Jared. Uh, Rar Brewing's Bozo Nightmare. Yes. Nightmare. Like uh, like the Knights of Medieval Times. Bozo Nightmare. Double IPA. Nightmare. Yeah, the Nightmare is making the puns in my brain tickle. Bozo Nightmare in the can artwork. There's a clown and a knight on a horse, which is funny and terrifying. Um, gosh, Bozo Nightmare. The got knight. it. Okay, go. Give me. I got nothing. It's it's the story of a knight. What are they? Squires. And yep. He's working on becoming a knight, and oh, he's going through his apprenticeship. I love this. And he has a dark horse, which is kind of frowned mm. upon, and uh, they call him. They call the horse Bozo. Got this it. Is before we know Bozo the clown, yes. but he's the nightmare, the night horse. Oh, 
of Bozo, and he's kind of like the blind pig. Yes, uh, but he works the opposite way, where this Got horse it. is just constantly screwed. Like this knight would would probably sit at King Arthur's table, except he's got this god awful horse named Bozo the Nightmare. I'm reaching a little bit. No, I like that though. That's fun. And the horse is right at first, really ruining this guy's life and his career, but. Maybe it's one of those stories where it like one of its bad habits actually saves his life. Like he's, you know, yelling at his horse in the stables after he kicks him, bucks him yeah. off during like some joust and makes him lose it. As that's happening, like an invading army sneaks into the castle and kills almost everybody else. And he's like now the king of this kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> Just because he was in the wrong right place at the wrong time. Bozo like bows his head. Exactly, to him. He's right. like, I got you. I got bud. you. And then runs into the woods and you never see Bozo <laughs> again. But it doesn't matter. He has a whole kingdom now. Also, uh, uh, I guess he also has a castle full of an invading army. But, you know, we can figure that out. Yeah, one step at a time. Right, That's exactly. for the sequel. Got rid of the horse, got rid of his boss. So good. good That's good. I like that. It, 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 there's a good, like, uh, you just beat down on Bozo the night horse. Yep. Um, <laughs> The night, <laughs> the night and, horse. Uh, <laughs> and and then he ends up being the savior sure yeah sure bozo nightmare not bozo bad nightmare fun it could also be a, cl- a, a you could probably work in a clown in there of course you could of course you could some jester or something that that maybe screws it all up i like it <laughs> that's his horse is just jester in a horse <laughs> costume <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's where he just bows and then Right, runs away with his loot or whatever. <laughs> if you want to joust, you got to be in the back, bud. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here. That's good. Thanks for that, Jared. All right, swiping on, uh, Alex. Ooh, have we done this one yet? No, we haven't. We haven't. From burial, it's a very burial beer. Alex, yes. The savages of ruminating minds. Oh God. All right. <clears throat> so great beer, great brewery. It's just, I feel like all their beers are already a story in the title. What are, how, who are we to think we can add to it? But let's try the savages of ruminating minds. So ruminating is like thinking. Is that when you're yeah, ruminating, you're, like, you're pondering like after, after someone right. lands a nasty insult on you and you're sitting there ruminating on yeah. it. I think of the word, the savages of ruminating minds. What could the savages be? I mean, be careful here. Um, <laughs> learn from Pocahontas, uh, which you can't sing about anymore. So the um, <laughs> the, uh, the it could be savages of ruminating minds. Ooh. Okay. Good. Um, John's on tonight. Well, this is John's night. I don't. So I like the the flip here of this being a story about football coaches. They're Great. the ruminating minds, and the Perfect. quote savages are the football players, and it's like probably like wow. maybe high school or college football, and it's like all the crap that they have to go through to be part of this guy's vision that he wants right. to win a title. Got it. I see this. Yeah. So like a right a grueling coach who's you know no room for error on his team, and a bunch of young kids just trying to play a game they love, and this guy brings it to the edge of ruining it for them all until they kind of take a little bit of the the power back and maybe they kick them off the sideline for the the final game and run Ooh. their own plays. And they, they're not just pawns in this, like they can do it themselves. And there's a, uh, someone gets hoisted up on someone's shoulders at the end, like Rudy, but not Rudy. And yeah. <laughs> there's something happy. There is the coach is thrown in a garbage bin or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. There could be something, everything turns into some goofy eighties movie in my mind too quickly, <laughs> but I, whatever. <laughs> it went from Al Pacino as the coach right, right, right to Nick Nolte in five minutes. <laughs> oh, he needs work. Um, That's true. That's <laughs> although true. I don't know if we can anymore, but uh, we'll give him a shot. Give you a shot, Nick. Something like that. I like that. That's great, John. That's way better than wherever I'm it's, trying I mean, to go. This, I, don't, I don't think that's a very easy uh, movie title, um, but great. And that's from Alex, uh, who used to work with us a long that's time right. ago. Good job, Alex. Drink, still drinking great beer. Still drinking great beer. Uh, moving down one, we've got Bob P giving us from Shred Ooh, Beer Company. Man. This is a Harrison layup already. <sighs> Relooped. Blah, there's so many options. I'll tell you what, though. It looks like the image, the logo, rather, is of like a soundboard, a mixing board. Yeah, I think you're right. So I'm wondering, obviously, loops are common in music, too. You loop a beat or you loop some drums or whatever, and you play a song over it. 
maybe instead of the obvious, which is some time travel movie, maybe this is much more about the music and maybe someone accidentally reloops some track, like saying Beetlejuice three times, he reloops something three times and opens up some portal he shouldn't have that a bunch of, you know, ne'er do well dwarves come out of. I don't know. There's <laughs> who try to steal all the music from our reality and pull it back into theirs. And so okay. he's, he's fighting to save music that every minute people forget exists. And Kinda he like an has... evil Narnia coming to right. Steal exactly music right. Back. An evil Narnia coming here, taking our music to power their dying son or whatever thing. We'll figure Definitely that out. Definitely Jack Black. <laughs> Jack Black is, 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 is the relooper. Is, okay. <laughs> it's the, or he's the, he's the troll trying to steal the music. He could be the relooper with his electric guitar. Yeah. He keeps, that's he's the one keeping the music alive just by playing it. And maybe he discovers that, that that's got the weapon as he plays notes on his guitar. They wow. become weaker and he, he's able to kill them. And this could be a sequel to, School of Rock, he maybe gets the whole band back together. So now this is now this is Jack Black. He's older, kind of retired, mixes music for fun at the community college on the weekend and comes across this track that nobody's touched and actually reloops it, opens up the portal, so he has to call on his his former bandmates to save reality and music from uh from these crazy well, they're all in like music tools. college now so they of got course. plenty of time plenty of time yeah, <laughs> yeah. no yeah, yeah well, we have jobs. Two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> that could be something jack black let us know you probably enjoy that some sweet guitar solos yeah he'd be fun to work with too it would be fun to work with all right relooper that went somewhere fun we're on a roll tonight feeling good uh, let's see what we got next from Jason. Ah. Drinking Mile Wide Beer Company's Moxie. Moxie. Anybody up near Boston area is probably thinking of a weird soda Moxie. drink right now. That's what I'm thinking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, was a, that was a rite of passage to drink that horribly bitter drink at the end of high school. <laughs> Moxie. <laughs> so Moxie's a great movie. I, I want it to be Clint Eastwood or, or something like it. Yeah. Like it's, it's very, it already, I, I love the main character. I don't even know what the movie's about. Exactly. And the image is of a motorcycle, I guess is what I'm saying. Maybe or a dirt bike, maybe. Yeah, kind of James <laughs> Dean inspired You're or right. something like that. It looks like old that. school. So we don't need to necessarily use that in the, the movie, but it definitely, this is right, obviously about some dude moxie. What's like, it, this could be a story about evil Knievel. That's Ooh. easy. Or 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 a story about Moxie Robbins, the 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 the, the evil Knievel that never was. I was just, I was like, wait, who's Moxie Robbins? <laughs> exactly right. A name no one knows. Everyone knows evil Knievel. Who jumped over 80 buses? Moxie Robbins tried to do a hundred. Die jumping over hundred. Yeah. <laughs> but this is Moxie. this is his story, right? Or or not enough? And we walk through his Johnny Cash like uh, you know drug and alcohol fueled uh, awesome life in the 70s that you know clearly didn't prioritize work and practice and ended up in the <laughs> side of a bus. Uh, I, I, it'd be a, such a good like anti-hero story though, yeah, where sure. you know nobody wants their kid to grow up and be Moxie, but right, at the right. same point, he's got a lot of like good dialogue. Yeah, it's fun. Lots of cool lines. Jam pack it with hilarious A-list celebrities who are for some reason doing this movie about a non-existent uh, stuntman. But you can have fun with Moxie Robbins. Go ahead and have the Evil Evil, and he just doesn't make it. Wow. I love this movie. <laughs> I absolutely want to see this movie. Yeah, a lot of fireworks, a lot of great music, a lot of a lot of beer, a lot of fun. Yep. And a tragic death at the end. But That's right. Right maybe, through bus. Maybe he was Evil Knievel's dad. Oh, okay. Yeah. Moxie Knievel. No, Moxie Robbins. Moxie yeah. Robbins. Right. I don't know why Robbins. But <laughs> it, it, works. Could, it could be his dad. Maybe it was. Or. Ooh. Moxie Robbins saves a kid. I don't know what Evil Knievel's background story is, but yeah. like he saves Make a kid right from like an abusive like mm. home relationship. He's like, come on, kid, you want you? I'll show you how to do. Come on the road with me. You're gonna be my manager. You're gonna set us up. I'm yep. gonna jump a hundred buses. That yep. kid ends up being Becoming Evil, evil Knievel. Knievel, and it's like I'm never doing a hundred buses. I'll just do eighty. <laughs> Grand Canyon, no problem. <laughs> I did that on the back of Moxie's dirt bike twice. That's, that's right. He used to do that first thing in the morning just to wake up. <laughs> um, yeah, the unsung story of Moxie Robbins. Shoot. Ooh, such a good... Love good that. Times. Love that. Good Thanks job, Mile that. Wide. 
Yeah. Uh, coming up next, Mike from Iowa. Oh, hello, here. Well, we'll probably skip Saint Sammy, the patron saint of Saison. Um, is that too beery? I think means French. It uh, means season, season in French. Okay, you're right. So you're right. We could, like obviously Saison is a pretty saint popular beer style. Sammy. But, yeah, that's <laughs> the, the the patron saint of seasons. Uh, Saison. Ah. Uh, all I can think of is Boondock Saints. Oh, okay. That is, that is not I'm, the I'm locked in on Saint Sammy, the patron saint of sandwiches, is all I can think of. Yeah, like <laughs> that that movie with Pete Davison from Long Island. Okay, okay, yep. Um, which was actually a better film than I thought it was going to be. But, uh, yeah, I don't have anything for this one. I don't, I don't think I do either. Okay. Looks like a good beer. I'm sure You it could is. probably do something like Persephone when she ate the pomegranate seeds when she was down in hell. Uh, Only it was St. Sammy instead and Hades. Uh, anyways, I'm going to skip. I'm there might skip, be something there. I'm going to skip that one for yeah. now. It's not the movie. Uh, but nothing against the beer. Just That's right. hard to make into a movie. Even harder, Ooh. maybe. Uh, crispy <laughs> gives us from Dogfish Head, Namaste White. White. Namaste White. That's this the name like, of every yoga studio. This is, this is White Man Can't <laughs> Jump with a new name. Right. White Man Can't Namaste is what we're seeing here. Well, they really can. Who knows? Maybe we'll find on this movie. That could be, could be right. Some yoga studio drama type thing, which there shouldn't be any drama in yoga, yoga studio, but maybe that's why it's interesting. Namaste white. The white is really throwing it's me the, off. It's the white that makes it really hard. Yeah. I understand why it's there because of the beer, but um, man, what else could we do? Namaste white. Uh, what's... Why white in the movie? Is it the? Eh, Are they like warring factions? Exactly what of I'm Yogi thinking. People? This is like some West Side Story type thing where they're trying to out yoga the the yoga th- place across town. White is the highest level <laughs> oh, of yoga that you like can belts. get to. Got it. Like karate belts, which makes sense. I feel like it's actually the opposite of karate. Yeah. Right, the opposite of karate, which also makes sense because we're not we're not fighting. We're stretching essentially um so i like that so the top of the namaste the non-existent yoga belt system <laughs> <laughs> is uh it'd be like a it wouldn't be belts it'd be leotards or whatever but that's not important leg warmers um no that's uh yoga, yoga pants. right yoga pants is white and so it's it could be or it could be battling yoga studios it could be just one person's journey to enlightenment namaste white I don't know if it's a movie, but that's a thing. That's what we got. <laughs> we'll save you the rest of that one uh, and move on. Crispy had another beer um, from Other Half Brewing. <laughs> Here you go, Harrison. Oh, boy. Cream, get the honey. The cream, get cream, the honey. Cream, get the honey. On Grace Porch from Other Half, and a New England IPA. Cream, get the honey. Cream, get the cream, honey. Cream, get the honey. Like... <laughs> It, that's the first thing I think of is just like an old man on a porch yelling at his, cream, his wife. Cream, cream get cream the honey. Your cream. It's a great nickname. Cream, get the honey. <clears throat> and the honey's not there. The honey was gone. This is a mystery movie about who stole this poor old folks honey jar. And another Winnie the Pooh origin story. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but it starts with that line, Cream Get the Honey. Honey's gone! Check with our boy Christopher Robin. See if he's seen it. <laughs> Chris, where are you, Chris? Chris is in a diabetic coma in the woods because he's just eating gallons of honey with his stuffed <laughs> animals. <laughs> his imagination will take it out of this coma, Chris. Cream Get the Honey, Chris Get Diabetes. <laughs> there we go! Old Winnie the Pooh saves the day. Yeah, I don't have n- nothing jumps. Nothing jumps here. Um, it could know. be like it could be like maybe like a like sort of like a boxing movie. Oh, uh, okay. Like uh, where there's this Get crazy boxing honey. corner man who's always talking about you got to fight like cream. You got to you got <laughs> to hit you like honey. Be nimble and fight like cream. And that'll get you the honey. I, no, is that a good movie? <laughs> no. <laughs> Good line though, which I tell people like tell dumb people that to fight like honey to get the cream. <laughs> take on what Muhammad Ali said, yes, I, but yep. he didn't take it to its full potential. Right, fight like the honey and uh, fall like the cream. I don't know how you 
<laughs> Anyways, uh, it's from other half. I'm sure it's a decent beer. I'm but sure it is. Yeah, not a uh, not, not a it is a movie. One. Tito checks in blueberry wheat ale. Yeah. Great, great, but a little too on the name on More the nose. Gansett. Narragansett is just Jaws for anyone wondering. Right. Narragansett is just Jaws the movie. Uh, oh, this could maybe work from Andrew, Ooh. who gives us uh, Brew Dog oh, beer. Oh, here we go. Brew Dog's in a little bit of trouble recently, but Are they? Um, oh, good. Eh, mismanagement, that sort uh, of thing, getting okay. yelled at. But, um, <laughs> but, anyways, regardless, it's Fast Five. We look at the beer names. This one is Sorry I'm Latte. I have this one. So, this Great. is, this is, it starts with, Joe Schmo, the busy, fancy, too good for you businessman, going into his local coffee shop he does every day, cuts the line, grabs his latte. Everyone's flustered and upset that he's always cutting the line, never tips. He's a jerk, whatever, but he's a customer, so we got to make it for him. Susie, stop complaining. Just make Mr. Smith his, uh, right, his, uh, his latte and get him out the door. And so one day he bumps into a traveling witch or something in line, doesn't apologize, and she turns him into somebody else's latte, and he has to <laughs> he has to unlatte himself before the big board meeting he's supposed to present <laughs> that afternoon at, and you know the and yeah that's the and the uh, barista that hates him. That serves him every day is the one that discovers that he is now a cup of coffee and she has to help him on this journey begrudgingly because she hates his guts. And this is just a psychedelic, trippy, out of this world movie um, about a guy who turned into a latte. That's it. And he's played by Steve Carell. <laughs> next. That'd be great. Uh, it'd be in theaters next week. If it if, really if, would if, be, if you had Steve Carell playing a latte. Sure, if you bought into the, yeah, him being a latte, a lot of foam milk jokes, a lot of, a lot of, <laughs> it'd be it'd be gold. Oh my gosh. Um, that's that's better than anything I had, and you crushed it. That's what I got. Uh, sorry, I'm latte. Sorry, I'm latte. Moving on, Vanilla Porter. We're gonna skip that. Yeah. But thanks for checking in, Rich. Uh, RBO gives us Voodoo Ranger Juice Force. Now, Voodoo Ranger is almost a bigger beer name yeah. than New Belgium, the brewery that makes it. Yep. Voodoo Ranger Juice Force. Juice I'm thinking like Force. a Star Tro- Starship Troopers sort of movie. Yeah, Starship Troopers. We've done this something similar with the Mango Mule or whatever we yep. did a couple episodes ago, I think. And uh, yeah, Juice Force makes me think of G.I. Joe or Juice whatever. Force. Juice Force. Pour one out for OJ. <laughs> oh. <Yeah. laughs> Uh, yes, uh, let's do that. So the so juice force, that would be, um, gosh, it could be, yeah, right. Like coconut head man and uh, watermelon <laughs> baby and <laughs> guava boy, <laughs> banana lady. And they all get together and use the powers of their fruit to fight scurvy. Sugar. Got it. Yep. <laughs> we're, we're fighting simple sugars. Juice force. This is By like being a, made of sugar. Right. Exactly. This is this is a Saturday morning cartoon. Bunch of juice mutants fighting processed foods. Maybe. Yeah. It works as a Saturday morning cartoon. Eighties, nineties time. Oh, I can see it. Just karate chopping through a bunch of processed turkey meat and Swiss cheese and stuff as yep. it's trying to get to little Bobby's plate. Don't have the cereal again. Mommy, my tummy always hurts. Stop complaining. Have Instead your red Power Ranger, your yo-yo like loops. The, the Guava Ranger <laughs> jumps in. Here, enjoy this. All right at the end, they all are like emaciated and dying because they've given up all their food to some <laughs> kid. But that's it's always pulp. skipped. We're just in the cre- the credits go over that as they just lay dead on the table every week, yeah. and it's never explained how they come back to life. Um, <laughs> would be. That would be something. Voodoo Ranger would be a lot of fun to workshop, but sure. Juice Force, in this case, we're playing by the rules. Yeah. Juice Force and Voodoo Ranger. Either of those would be good, but together. Man, fun times. Okay. Juice Force. Um, okay. We could probably try Pucker from Punch. Curtis from Vibrisa Beer. Mm-hmm. Uh brewery I'm not familiar with. It's yeah. rare I, that happens. And right. then uh the beer's name is Pucker Punch. Pucker Punch. Pucker. Punch, pucker. What makes you pucker sour pucker stuff? Punch. Obviously, and a lot of these sour beers do this kind of fun thing with pucker or punch or 
whatever, because sometimes that's what you're doing with your mouth while you're drinking them. But what else could this be about? I, I'm thinking boxing movies, but maybe not boxing, maybe pucker. Oh, could it be like, uh, we'll see if this is a thing, but like some guy discovers, I'm doing a lot with magical things people discover. But Accidentally bumps whatever. into a witch while he's <laughs> buying his In a candy in. shop <laughs> where, this time and she hands him a, a sour candy that instead makes him super strong. Maybe it's the opposite. Maybe some right traveling witch sees some guy help some person in a park, some old lady across the street, go out of his way, and she's like, aha, that's the next one who gets my, my pucker punch candy and slips it in his bag and he eats it on the train and someone's trying to rob some old lady there and he punches him into the next car. Basically, candy makes this guy... A superhero, but the whole time he's got that sour pucker face. So it's tough because he's his eyes are watering. <laughs> <laughs> he can't see well. He can't focus because his teeth hurt with how sour this candy is. But he has the strength of a thousand men. That's for a rhinoceros, 30, not a criminal. Thirty seconds at a time, right? He's fighting buses and telephone poles because he can't see who he's battling, but he's so winning. Pucker punch is a is a local tradition out in like the Kentucky backwoods. Okay, where uh, when you're like when you're finally like when you're d- around that like senior <laughs> skip day, uh, getting ready to graduate from high punch. school, the elder classmen will come down. They'll be like, "Come out to the woods at nine when the sun's going down. We're gonna make up a batch of pucker punch and let y'all Ooh. get super drunk." So all the kids come out and they try this pucker <laughs> punch for the first time, and it's it's. <sighs> The joke is like the seniors prepared this for him, but it's just yep. wicked sour. Yep. And when they all drink it, one of the kids goes crazy and maybe not like outright outright, but it affects their minds and they start to kill everyone. Ooh. It turns into a it's always go, been a horror movie. They go crazy. John thought of it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> they go crazy, right, and kill everyone in the woods and then head to the, except for maybe one or two kids that escape that didn't want to be there and they're the the yeah well so and then right to the town goes to destroy it and those two kids that survived the pucker punch party have to try to prevent their their hometown's destruction that'd be fun some punch goes this punch went sour yeah you can see (laughs) hold on to your britches that'd be fun i like that a lot some kind of right some uh what's it called some jonesville vibes or whatever yeah, everyone drinks the Kool Aid. Yeah, uh, oh, that could the just last be the Jones time. story. Yeah. Right, that's it. It's just a quick movie. It's some pretty good stuff. I... <laughs> <laughs> this will save you from the invading feds. <laughs> you're right, and the everything you, for the dead. rest of your life, which that's right. is only going to be a couple. Don't minutes. Don't worry about your taxes. Seriously. All right, Pucker Punch. Good try. I like Pucker Punch. That's fun. Could be fun to workshop. Yep. I'm not ready to uh, to ultimate no, him yet. No, no, okay? no. I'm not either. We're getting there as always, but we're not quite there yet. Ooh, hmm, isn't he? Okay, go ahead. From Alex, uh, gives us from Spyglass Brewing Company the mezzanine. Or sorry, just mezzanine round. Mezzanine round. Yeah. What is this? So is that like the so mezzanine's like the what the top level or a higher level in like a stadium or whatever? Or? I worked in one hotel where oh. we claimed to have a mezzanine level. <laughs> and okay. It was like in between the first and second floor. It was like hmm. it was like it was like a loft. We put all the banquets up there. Okay. Um, and we called it the mezzanine. So- now. <laughs> did we study Rome before we made that? No. Uh, that I also worked for a boss there that told me to use my soiree because I think he thought he thought soiree meant charisma, <laughs> and it doesn't. It it doesn't mean that. A lot of learned people. Yeah. Me, let's see if we can find out what mez. Uh, oop, there it is. Good. Meaning actually means a low story between two others in a building, table between the ground and first floors. Okay. I take it back. Good job. <laughs> That hotel, <laughs> you were, you were, well, I haven't named your name, so we're safe, and you were right about mezzanine. I shouldn't have even said Interesting. Guessing. So it's an intermediate floor in a building, partly open. Okay, so mezzanine rounds. This is like a big round. It doesn't help me at all. It doesn't help me at all. There's no story. I don't know if there's a story here, unless this is, oh, man. Maybe mezzanine round has a different. Uh, well. 
there's a, I have a couple ideas kind of floating around here, but I, I don't, I, they feel like echoes of things we've already done, but let's, let's see. Um, so it could be that like, as we're in an office building, the underperforming new nerdy, nervous kid, the mezzanines where all the, the coffee and the stuff is where kind of the communal, the meeting area, the water cooler, all that stuff. So our protagonist, some scared recent college grad has a crush on some girl from the top floor Caesar maybe twice a week, the mezzanine round, every time he blows it, and maybe some whimsical janitor or, witch. you know, <laughs> traveling witch in a coffee or candy shop, um, <laughs> you know, encourages him to do something different one day or, um, or gives him a second chance at making an introduction and, and he takes it. It's kind of, and it's kind of like that movie sliding doors with, Gwyneth Paltrow, where if you haven't seen it, like basically she tries to make the train and in one reality she does like just make it through the doors as they shut to get on the train. Other one, she misses it and you kind of see her two lives, uh, one if she made it, one if she didn't. Um, And it's a cool movie. Something like that where like he has a second chance and we get to see if he did what he should have done, what could have happened and then if he didn't, what love it actually he happened. Up, and- like in a in a small, like overpriced rental in the yep. city that he can barely afford, yep. but he's with that girl from the mezzanine there versus we go. he ends up being a partner in the company. Right. He turns around to not talk to her and bumps into the, the CEO who's like, you're that kid that had that idea about the new uh, fleet of stores, right? Come up and talk to me about it. So, right. If he had just stayed and talked to her 30 seconds, his life would have been different and makes you question what success is. Really? Is True. it that top office on the top floor in the corner, or is it a dingy apartment with the person you love? Find out in Mezzanine Round. also sounds like as the shopping mall turns, like a soap <laughs> opera. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, sands to the ground. <laughs> exactly right. There's some I, things I, mean, there. I, I kind of dig that. It could be kind of fun to play yeah. with that, uh, tell two different stories. Yeah. And uh, for any of you still wondering, the definition of success is not running an office at the top of the it's not. building as a CEO. Offices are all gone now. We all work from home. That's true. Stay in your shorts, people. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Pajamas are your only clothes. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to move down to... Brute Legrand. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm going to skip that yep. one because yep, yeah, it's just a movie about a dog who boxes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Done. Ooh, Matt K from Mortalis <laughs> Brewing Company. Oh, baby. Amazing brewery. Gives us Hera. Hera. Uh, I mean, that story's already told. Okay. Uh, it's, uh, she was, she was, a uh, she's not. She wasn't the Greek goddess, right? She was Roman. Oh boy, John, uh, you're no the better Roman than me. Athena? The patron goddess of lawful marriage. Oh, maybe she was Greek. Maybe she was. Uh, Mount some... Olympus. Yep. Yep. Okay. Was both sister and and wife of Zeus. <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> things were different back then when you were a god. Um, okay, so law, women, marriage, and childbirth. Hera. So this could be a story kind of about um, a girl who's not named Hera. In fact, maybe Hera never comes up in the telling of this story. But she's like, uh, she's a traveling... uh, Witch? (laughs) (laughs) You could could probably, some people would probably think of her as a witch when there's going to be a complicated birth, like... Uh, the your, your wife's pregnant, but the baby's breach, uh, and then this ah. woman shows up, and she's able to kind of like just intuitively just massage the baby where it's gonna come out like it should instead of probably dead. Got it. Um. Yes. So that's it's a story almost like Doctor Quinn. Got medicine it. Medicine woman. woman. Love it. Um. But but in this case, Ooh. it's uh. It pro- I almost wanted to take place like during the American Civil War. Oh, okay. A period piece. I like that. I was going to say that's, that's great. And maybe it's even, maybe this is too obvious, but like kind of an, an always the brides may never the bride type scenario. Like she's delivered a thousand babies and saved 800 that should have died, but you know, no kids of her own, no time for a relationship. And then this could go one of a thousand <laughs> ways. Like, you know, immaculate conception happens or, 
meets a traveling wizard this time on the road. <laughs> and then all of a sudden she has a baby and maybe, I mean, this could go horror. This could go comedy. Like she, all she ever wanted is a baby, but this one doesn't feel right until and- she marries her brother. Oh boy! <laughs> <laughs> right, Civil War, folks. Yeah, um, times are hero. different. Uh, yeah, I don't. Right, and then then we've got problems uh, when the baby shows up. I don't know. This could be a Rosemary's Baby type thing. Could be a funny or kind of take on being a parent after. You know, it's it's easy to deliver a baby. What's tough is when you take them home, and that's kind of the joke of of the the film if we go that route i don't know maybe this can go a bunch of different ways i don't really know what i like or don't like or whatever but i see i was picking up what you're putting down john yeah um while it would be fun i'm uh, i don't know i don't i'm gonna skip that one yeah that's not the one tonight but we're getting close i know i've said that a lot but we're, we're almost there i can sense it I can feel it uh, a lot of different interesting yeah brett from uh brett checks into a beer from river watch brewery queen mave queen the only mave. thing i know about queen mave is she she put up with homelander and the boys a lot oh. i don't know if there's a story behind queen mave oh, if boy. she was a real historical figure Let's but it'd be hard to do out. queen mave without the world thinking this is a movie about that poor girl who had to put up with homelander's <laughs> crap so much <laughs> Yeah, I think it's, I think, I think, oh, Maeve, also a goddess, powerful wild warrior deity, the goddess about love, fertility, and war and death. Oh, Celtic. Uh, Okay, yes, Celtic. That makes sense. The Irish Celtic goddess of war and love. Of course, Queen Maeve. All right, so this is very similar to the Hera story. It's also an American Civil War movie. (laughs) Where a female takes charge right. of a, a ne'er do well platoon of soldiers that tried to go AWOL. Right. Or is it during the Irish potato famine? True. And, and she, her farm is the only one that can grow potatoes for some reason. And they try to, everyone tries to invade it and take it. And she's got to fight them all off. <laughs> Cream, get the honey. <laughs> Which is the name for their, their cannon, they call it. Yeah. The honey pot. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Just taking people's heads off. Did that we, could be something. Back to back goddesses. Okay. <laughs> Wild. I mean, that's cool. It's nice to see that in beer. Yeah. Um, yep. I'm going to scroll All about on. It. To, uh, we got see. another one. What do we got? From Dean Bean. Oh, I know this one. Uh, yeah. Who checks into v- uh, Voodoo Brewing's White Magic <laughs> of the Sun. Magic is spelled in a trendy way M A G I C K. I don't know if that makes the magic different. Maybe that signifies that it's a traveling sort of oh, witch magic which <laughs> white, a lot of traveling witches and goddesses tonight white magic of the sun i almost think this is like a cocaine Miami oh movie. okay how about this how about this okay i think stay with me here so this could be i like cocaine i like miami what if, like, a bunch of drug runners have a plan that's coming full circle to our first beer, where it's like 1979 or some eclipse during the 70s that happens over Miami? Their plan is during the eclipse, we're going to rob the biggest bank in town. We'll have five minutes of total darkness. All the cops will be busy crowd controlling the people on the main beach that are watching the eclipse. This is our time to rob them blind and double launder all our drug money. And not even rob them. Maybe that's what it is. It's like the FBI has just figured out how to track money from drug lords, and they know this. So they got to take their $2 million and switch it out with clean money in this bank. So it's not even a robbery. It's They're, they're smart criminals. They're very they efficient money laundering. Right. They're going to just literally swap the bills uh, during this five-minute window. And so that's most of the movie is them. How do you do this in five minutes? It's impossible. And it's trials and tribulations. We did 15 minutes. We did 12 and 8. It's not enough. Ah, Cut it nice. down. It's like a heist film. Heist film. Those are fun. And then, uh, yeah, White Magic of the Sun. So a bunch of bunch of druggies trying to clean some money during an eclipse in the 70s. That's it. I like it. <sighs> Good. I like it. I like the idea of workshopping some like bank robby. Yeah, heist movies. Heist are probably haven't done one of those yet. Those are a blast. I don't know if it's the one. I don't know. It's there. We said it. We could come back. It's on the surface. Yeah. We are getting closer. We are getting close. We are getting closer. El Rojo Grande, Tyler gives us from Destin Brewery. 
Rojo. Rojo Grande. Is it the Big Red? The Big Red. And it is an Imperial Red Ale, so that does make sense. El Rojo Grande. This is just a movie about Clifford the Big Red Dog. Done. But in Mexico. Right? Done. <laughs> Clifford the Big Red uh, per, per, Perro? El Rio El Rojo Grande. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Shane at Q Beer Ooh. gives us a beer from Root and Branch Brewing called Eyes, Eyes Without, a, Without face. a Face. Great song by, oh man. Is it Tears for Fears or is it... Oh. <laughs> It's one of those great '80s I think, bands. Uh, I, it's some, I it's not the cure. It's not Tears for Fears. It's, it's the one I always get confused. Pause for Google identification. Eyes without a face. Oh, there's also a movie from the '60s. Billy Idol. Really? Ah. Uh, anyway, man, eyes without dumb. a face. Me too. But uh, nothing new for me. All right, eyes without a face. Eyes. That's a t- well. So this is the Cheshire Cat. Uh, which I guess he was a smile first and then the eyes. Eyes without a face. Is this a movie about the surveillance state? That's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is how the FBI finds the drug lord's money. It's, right. Uh, sur- it's heavy surveillance. Yep. It's early Obviously, drones. Obviously, you think in 1984, but it's not like big brother government stuff. It's Maybe it's someone else that's... It's like uh, the reason everyone's afraid of TikTok right now. Uh It's it's, uh, people monitoring you. That's right. Seeing everything you're doing, but uh, you don't even know they're there. But who? I mean, there's those people that send you text messages randomly and say like, hey, I left my car at your house. And you're like, who the fuck are you? Uh, This is a different group of people that just monitor you. And uh, what, what are they? What are they doing it for? What are that's they always to get? my question too. There's not much to see for me, but monitor away, I guess, if that makes you happy. Fair. Yeah, but we we could we could do something with some kind of surveillancey, yeah, Big Brother type thing there. Damn, I really got excited about the name, but yeah, I don't. It doesn't punch me in the face yeah. with movie right away. Right away, we need to flesh it out. Who's the protagonist? And maybe it's a ooh. I don't know. I don't know. All right, we'll find one that jumps out. Yeah. We'll find our banana whale, if you will. (laughs) Um, Well, in this case, Dean Bean has checked into another beer back-to-back from Voodoo Brewing. (laughs) Big Black Voodoo Daddy. Man, oh, man. This is the prequel to White Magic of the Sun or whatever that. This is the thumbnail that gets us taken (laughs) off of YouTube. (laughs) Yeah, I don't think we can make this movie. Big Black Voodoo uh, big Daddy. Big Black Voodoo Daddy. Man. I mean, the BBVD. Yeah, well, it's a, it's probably a New Orleans film. Has to be. Um, it could be similar. It could be a mashup of like Aladdin meets Big meets Candyman. Like you wow. get a you get a lot. lot. <laughs> They're like, you get three wishes from the big black voodoo daddy if you can find them, but the price is too high for anyone to really cash in, and it's the story of, you know, whatever, Ooh, some like young that, couple though. being hunted down by the big black voodoo daddy, and they do outsmart him somehow, I don't know how, but something like that. Yeah, uh, it, co- it costs him deeply. Yeah. Um, that's a, I think that's a good way we could get away with that movie, but I'm still scared of making the thumbnail. <laughs> yeah, no, we can't. Um, so I will, <laughs> yeah. I will pause on that. Thanks for that, Dean Bean, but uh, thanks. Uh, Max uh, Q gives us Allagash White. Great movie. Sure. It's the third time White's come up in a name, and uh, I don't think we could do that. Great beer. Sorry, yep. rough movie. Uh, uh, Carissa uh, from Mason Ale Works gives us Crimson Bouquet. Shoot. Crimson Bouquet. Is this about the Valentine's Day slaughter? No. Or but... is it a, a follow-up to the Crimson Waffles Fast Five we did a couple weeks ago where now it's a, <laughs> it's a vampire florist shop <laughs> and they're putting blood in all the flowers? <laughs> Crimson Bouquet is such a... It has to have some kind of horror tropes built into mm-hmm. it. Um, the Crimson it's, Bouquet. It's maybe it's like uh, there, it's a serial killer, and you get a Crimson Bouquet, oh. and that's how you know you're you're next on the list. But you can't do anything about it. You don't know where it's coming. Or how about this? We can't make this movie because I'm about to reveal the end of it. But what if it's like a a murder mystery, a whodunit? Woman comes home to her husband dead. Um, you know. 
in their living room or whatever, police investigation, no leads, can't figure it out. The wife's a suspect, but her alibi kind of checks out. And then um, what ends up happening is it is the wife, and the way the detective figures it out is there's flowers in a vase in their like on the table in their kitchen that when he got there, they were red because as she like murdered her husband, she dropped them in his, they were white flowers, dropped them in his blood and they soaked up his blood, which changed the petals white. But then she guarded the evidence and just put them in a vase. And over a couple days taking fresh water in, they became like pink or more white or whatever. And he figures that out on the last, like a visit to her house and remembers the flowers and they changed color and is like, it's you, you did it. Wow. It was his blood. And they're able to somehow pull his blood out of the remaining flower petals or he something. Brings out his and good friend, Iris, the botanist <laughs> who talks to the flower and it tells him. That's I want to make that movie, but you just finished I know, it. So I know yeah, the ending was the whole movie. The and that's tough to make, name it after the, the that was thing good, that, that was good. All right. Good. Yeah. Good. I like that. Be fun. Um, the whole movie, you don't think it's her, and then you see sure, the flowers are flowers color after it. the detective points it out. Yep. Um, and then he's like, "Don't worry, I'm not going to tell anyone. I've been cheating on you." That's my right. Wife We're still in love. Forever. Yeah, exactly. And you're like, what but the he's dead. Two Shyamalan. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, a double twist! I'm going to throw up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dean Bean. This is the third beer in a row we've seen yeah, from Dean Bean Dean having Bean's a great, night. great night. This is just called Beach Gear. Beach Gear. Beach gear. Beach gear. Oop. Beach gear. Is this a movie about dirt biking on the beach? Gear is in a bicycle gear. Got to kick it into beach gear. And again, all my stories are the same, but you know, some weak <laughs> They kid. run over a traveling witch. <laughs> <laughs> right. Some underperforming dirt bike guy befriends a traveling witch. He gets legs of steel. No, um, it could be like a fun, what was that movie? Brink? Or uh, there are a few of them growing up. It was like a rollerblady movie or a like a road bike movie. This is just that. Beach gear is that. Uh, point break on the beach, but with bikes instead of surfing. It could be point break, but with like with dirt, bikes. dirt bike people. We're trying to rob uh, the, yeah, the ammo car, the safe car, whatever. The guy who sells icy lemonade. That's it. Taking out the lemonade stand. and they're not catch me on this bike right, when I'm in beach they're gear. They're wearing dog masks instead of president masks or something. And they take them all. We just completely rip off point break with beach gear. Yeah, I'll scroll past yeah. that. But there's something there, but it, we can't make it. Uh, moving on from oh. Nate, he gives us a beer from High Branch Brewing Company called Great Brewery. Time to Start Thinking About Lunch, which is 24 hours a day for me. That's right. It's always uh, just happened, or it's I can't wait for it to happen exactly. again. Exactly. I'm with you there. It's happening right now. <laughs> <laughs> so far, it's so close. Um, okay, time to start thinking about lunch. So this is, oh man. Hmm. I don't know. What do you got? This, this is the story of, well, I, I don't know if I want it to be a chef, but I think I want it to be like, mm. a, he's like an, a tra- uh, like a door-to-door insurance salesman. Okay. Um, and he, his, he, he's all, he, he has to, you see him like training people and he's like, you know what the trick is? Since we're door to door, we never take lunch because that's when everybody's home. So right. you never take lunch. And then, uh, you know, we go on through his career and he's had, and it, this whole film takes place in like one day and it's Ooh. the worst day. Like, yes, it, it starts yes. with him stubbing his toe and that's the best <laughs> thing that could have happened to him. And coming yes. on around like five o'clock, he's, he's like, it's time to start thinking about lunch. That's not a punchline. That's not a movie. But I, I get it. No, I see what you're, I like this. One day, it's his longest day ever. And he, right, lunch just never happens um, because of all these hilarious or, in his from his perspective, horrible things that happen to him that keep delaying his ability to take a break and just sit down and have lunch. And maybe he looks, like, forward to lunch every day. Yeah, okay. And that's his joke to, like, his the newbie that's riding along with him on his first day who – you know, we get to experience it all as he does for the first time. Um, and right, just has a, a horrible day of cascading ridiculous things happen. And that's the running joke is the time to start thinking about lunch. And he just never gets there. And it's a, yeah, lessons learned. It's a, one of those life movies where the kid, uh, 
learns more about s- insurance sales or less about insurance sales and more about life yeah. in a single day. And also what happens when an older man in his sixties, blood, blood sugar drops too yeah. low and how violent they become. <laughs> this, this I'll do anything. Been, this milk's been in my car for four days. <laughs> Just give it to me. Give it to me. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> oh man. I was hoping that would be better. We're getting, uh, we're getting, we're getting close. I promise you we're getting close. <laughs> <laughs> we, yeah, we're just leaving. We're just letting the fates decide. Light resins. I'm willing to skip this. Yeah, we can. We can start ripping. We could even do another spin if you want, John. I'll yeah, let you. Yeah, we just landed the, on 302 just, yeah, lager, lager, which is uh, which is again not about the beer. Right, it's about the name. Uh, try that one. Do a little rip of fate. Rip it. Rip it. It's the next. It's the next. We can stop here. From Brian and Weldworks Brewing Company, Juicy Bits. Juicy Bits. This is a porn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we said in episode one, we're not ready for these yet. but Now we, we're we, ready. We, we, <laughs> so it starts with 14 girls. Right. <laughs> 14 traveling witches. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, okay. <laughs> That's at the witch convention. Not juicing. They're trying to. God, that's, oh, there actually might be a story there, but let's let's not. Got to make those bits juicy again. Um. So the uh. So the with some Stay witch tuned magic. For beer me that porno. That's on the <laughs> Patreon. <We'll> get, <laughs> yeah. Can't put that Ju- on the old juicy YouTube. Juicy bits. I got nothing. Well, it could be the the, the witch. The traveling witch conference is kind of funny, but um. Juicy bits, juicy bits. Maybe this is. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. All right. 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 I don't have the whole thing, but this is again. We're in the 1980s. We're at the three friends, nerds, no f- other friends in their life, love playing video games, the old 8-bit arcades. As most did back in the the glory days, head to the arcade with your stack of quarters or whatever, and and enjoy a fine Saturday. Get good enough to make it to the regional finals for Donkey Kong. Let's say, get there, realize that in the in the convention center at the same day is a porn convention, like a and, and these three kids have to like battle their hormones and Ooh. urges and. Run into some Stop right colorful there. characters to try to win Stop this right tournament. There I'm in. <laughs> it's juicy bits, baby. They gotta, they gotta, right? Get out of the. They get trapped on the porn side. They gotta get back in time for Tommy to play the final round. And it's the eighties. It's the eighties. Makes it great. So right, it's big hair everywhere. Yep. <laughs> Bush pushers. <laughs> That's right. We know all about those. Um, um, who I think this would be fun. I think it'd be so like fun. a mixture of like the what was it, the wizard with I think Fred Savage, where he okay. played Super Mario Brothers, yes. and like uh, the McLovin movie. Yep, super bad, um, yeah, super bad vibes. There's the girl next door vibes, which he dates a porn star and has yep. to deal with that. And so I'm in on uh, this. Um, do you want to ultimatum? Do you want to do a ooh, like, uh, or boy. do you want to just jump in? We should ultimate him, but that's that. You're right. Okay, juicy ultimate bits. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm gonna say with no real reason. Wow. Uh, two okay. two ultimatums. Two non beer beer. Yep. Ultimatums. So it's juicy bits juicy unless bits. we get infantry weather Ooh. from Tom. Uh, take t- talking cursive brewing company. Interesting infantry weather. I mean, what's that? The worst kind uh, of weather. In- infantry weather is like 107 <laughs> right. degrees, hot and humid, right. raining and raining snowing sideways. at the same time. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's just unfortunate. That's not a movie. Infantry weather could be fun. Okay. But um, but I don't like it better than this Juicy the Bits juicy idea. Bits. I mean, oh, like a war movie is fun. I can't wait for yeah, us to Yeah, we will. We'll get there. Absolutely. Um, but this isn't the one. Okay. So that's one. That's one. We got what do one we got? more. One more. Theme from Flock. Theme. Mike M. checks this beer in. It's called Theme. Uh, I'm going to read theme. his little poem. Cool. Day drunk on a corner, wet waist of a girl. 
theme for a jackal play you a death song. <laughs> Mike. It's not his poem. It's a song by the Misfits. Got but, it. Um, <laughs> the, and the artwork looks like there's some kind of alien in the flames or something here for this. So maybe are we missing something about theme? Is that, is that like a weird way of spelling them? Themes like... Well, you could you could make it into a movie. I just want to make juicy bits. I know. Um, you could make theme into a movie. It could it could be about a multitude of things. The first one that comes to mind is like, a, a, the guy who started Six Flags or something like that. <laughs> the crazy old man with the glasses and the bald head, um, right? That just dances to that horrible song. <laughs> um, I see what you're saying. Like a theme park movie, that would be fun. That, like or, yeah. Or just go for the big guy. Go for it's the unofficial Walt Disney biopic. We just oh, call wow. it theme, and it's him and Warner von Braun plotting about world domination and um, secret meetings. Mort Pisley. <laughs> <laughs> uh that could be that could be fun and funny and right. It's all the dark secrets that Disney doesn't want you to know, which we don't know, so we'd have a hard time making it, it, this. It's fiction. But, Right, maybe we do know. Although it'd be helpful if I knew a little bit. Yeah, have some fact. I mean, we're getting sued either way, so. Yeah, it won't last long. <laughs> but we can put newly public domain Mickey Mouse part one. That's right. We uh, can in the movie. Have so that, that goofy that looking cool. thing. Make it look a little more official. All right. Yeah, all right, all right. So I think I think I think we're in on juicy bits then, it, John. It's hard to turn it. Down. I mean, like juicy I don't the bits. The, it's going to be chal- more challenging than I think, well. but but like. 80s video games yeah. porn these are things that i loved as a child <laughs> <Right>. too <laughs> well versed and all these things oh my gosh i can i can see i can see a bit of i can i think i can see the movie um yeah uh, some of it let's do it let's do juicy bits you heard it here first and probably only <laughs> um, we'll see you in one week on wednesday when we give you our feature presentation juicy bits That's right. Tune in. We'll check it out.